Hey guys, it's Jake here with eTrailer. Today we've got a 2022 Ford F-250 and we're gonna be taking a look at, and I'm gonna show you how to install the Firestone Air Helper Springs. Air Helper Springs are going to be a suspension enhancement for the rear of your truck so that when you're hauling a heavy load in the bed of your truck or behind it on a trailer, it's gonna to help to support the rear end of your truck so you don't have so much sag in the back of it. The airbags we have on here today are going to have a maximum load carrying capacity of 5,000 pounds and a max PSI rating of 100 pounds. Now when it comes to having a set of airbags on your truck, I always highly recommend installing an onboard air compressor so that way at the click of a button, you can inflate and deflate your airbags on your truck and you don't have to use a, um, a hose from a compressor at your house or your shop. Um, I've had several times on the airbags on my truck where I was going to pick up a load and I couldn't decide whether or not I wanted to add the air to my airbags before I went to get it or um, if I wanted to stop at a gas station and try to find some, uh, one of those free air pumps in order to add some air to it. So adding an onboard air compressor allows you to inflate and deflate your airbags as you please. Now we've got our vehicle up in the air, we can take a closer look at what the bags look like when they're installed. You can see here, they're gonna mount on the top of your old perch from your, uh, from your dump spring, what it used to set on and it's gonna go between that and the bottom of our axle. This is what's going to actually cause the limiting of travel in our suspension. Our airbags themselves are gonna be double convoluted, which means we're gonna have a bubble here and a bubble here. Instead of having one big bag, it's gonna have a band right in the middle so that it separates it so that it can bounce up and down and not just be one big airbag that could cause um, potential sway in the future. So this is more designed to act like a spring so that it goes straight up and down. The top and the bottom, we're going to have rolled steel caps that will pinch the end of the airbag. And the end of the airbag, there's going to be a big, um, it's a big band that's in there, and then this steel cap will clamp on top of it. This particular part of it is going to make the airbag safe to lift up with a two-post lift. And the benefit of being able to lift your truck with a two-post lift is that if you ever take your truck to a shop where um, that's all they have is two-post lifts, you don't have to worry about telling them any specific directions of you can't lift the truck with the rear axle hanging. Um, a lot of people that go to a place to rotate their tires and stuff like that, they'll use a two-post lift because they can do them all at the same time. Uh, with other brands out there, if they just have a band around the ends of the bags, you can risk ripping the bag apart by those bands. Now, when it comes to this installation, I wouldn't say that it's a particularly hard installation. It's just time consuming. You'll find out very quickly after you do the one bag, it might take you um, a couple hours, maybe four or five hours to do the one side. And then you go to do the other one and it's much faster. Um, for me particularly, I've not installed this kit before this one, uh, this particular kit. And the first side took me about three hours. The second side took me about 45 minutes. So it just takes a little bit of figuring out, but hopefully this video makes it much faster for you. If you do not feel confident or you just don't feel like doing this install yourself, feel free to check out our dealer locator on our website to find a dealer closest to you that can do this install for you. But with that being said, let's go ahead and check it out. To begin our installation, you wanna drop your spare tire down out of the way so that it's not uh, in our way for removing the factory components. This is our Johns bumper. We're gonna to need to take the two nuts off of it and then the whole plate and Johns bumper and everything will come right off. And you wanna grab a flathead screwdriver. We're gonna stick it up in here, twist. We're gonna pry this stud out because we've got new bolts that need to go up in here. And you're gonna to wanna to take some zip ties. This is our bracket that's going up into our frame rail. I'm gonna slide it down through the triangle portion first. You can see there's a triangle and a square. Slide it through the triangle first. And then we're going to just tie this on. This is just to help us to um, have like a handle to pull down on this when we're trying to thread our bolts in place. It would also help to line the bolts up. And you'll take this with the nuts on top of that plate, slide it up into your frame rail. You might have to twist and turn it a little bit. Hold on to that one zip tie, grab the other zip tie, and then we'll pull it down just like this. Now grab one of your plates that looks like this. This portion, these legs here are gonna go against the frame rail. 
Our bolts here are gonna go up through this, and then our zip ties need to go down through these two little holes that'll help to align these with the weld nuts up there. Slide this up, make sure you get this factory hose out of your way. What we're going to do is take our bolts and get them threaded. And you'll grab a 5.5 millimeter or 5.5 millimeter Allen key. And we're going to tighten these up. Now you want to grab your torque wrench and check on top of the airbag for the correct torque specifications for those 3 8 bolts. And grab a knife or some snips and we're just going to cut these zip ties off because we don't need them anymore. They were just to help us align this bracket. And you want to grab your two brackets that look like these. I'm going to slide this over. This is going to be our bottom perch. The one we just installed up there is our top perch. You're going to take these flathead bolts, slide them up through the bottom, and follow them with a flange nut on each one. And grab a 14 millimeter socket and snug these up. For this next step, you are going to need to take a measurement from the top of this perch to the bottom of the uh, plate up here to see whether or not you're going to need a spacer. Um, you can look in your instructions. It'll give you those measurements. Those are much easier than me listing them all out. Um, but essentially, our F-250 is sitting stock here. Um, so we are going to need the spacer because we're at about seven inches between that gap. So you take the spacer that comes in your kit. There's just a little uh, nylon insert on the inside. We'll set that here. If you use this spacer, you'll have to use the longer bolt that comes in your kit. Slide that up to the bottom, and then we're going to get an airbag threaded onto this. Just leave this loose for now because there is a little bit of adjustment forward and back um, that we'll have to get it in place first. We'll mark a line all the way down it, and then we can pull it off slightly and then um, tighten everything back down. Then we'll take our air fitting. We're going to screw it into the top of this inlet here. There's threads on the inside and on the outside. The outside is to attach it to our top bracket. The inside is for this fitting here. We'll take this and we're going to tighten it so you can't see any more of that red Loctite anymore. Now grab one of your Schrader valves from your kit. Take like two inches of airline, cut it off, shove it into that uh, fitting. And what we're going to do is we're just going to smash this down, compress it, shove that in there, and then that makes our whole, our total height a lot smaller. It'll help us to get it in through this tight space a lot easier. We're going to rotate this up around. You shouldn't have to lift the back of your vehicle at all in order to do this. Just takes a little bit of finesse to get it in there. Once you get it to this point, we can take our that little piece we just made, pop that out so that the airbag fully inflates. You want that threaded portion to be towards the front of the vehicle. And you can see how I'm turning it. It shouldn't be able to turn. So you'll know once you get into the right spot, this is going to lock into the little blocks up there, right there. At this point, make sure that this is sitting flat on top of your uh, perch here. And then we're sitting over top of this bracket, which looks really good. What we need to do is just make sure that your airbag is straight. We're going to take a marker. We're going to put a line straight down on the airbag, the spacer, and the bracket below it. And then we're going to just kind of rotate this off a little bit, make sure all those lines are still lined up, and then torque down that bolt that's going through the bottom of the airbag.
Then take the large nut that comes in your kit. We're going to go on top of the earbag with that. That's going to thread into that um, structural piece I was talking about earlier. Grab a 15 16 socket or a wrench, either one. Um, really, the socket, if you use a tall one, it doesn't really fit super great in this gap, especially over on the passenger side. But um, a, uh, this ratcheting wrench works really, really well. The next step in our process is we're going to need to put our frame support on. And I've already done the passenger side of the truck, so you can see here. This is just uh, to be able to give the, um, the very, very end of this bracket some support to be able to sit on top of the frame here. There's another set of brackets that come in your kit, but those are designed if you don't have this, um, the Johns bumper perch that we're sitting on top of here. The problem that we're having on the driver's side is see this, how this is a full length bracket? Well, on the driver's side, this bracket that is the hub of everything uh, braking and axle breathing and all that kind of stuff is right in our way. So what I'm going to do is, because it's just that little extra safety precaution, I'm going to cut this off. That This portion of our bracket should still fit on our truck with our airbags, and then this portion right here will be sitting uh, pretty close to that axle. So what we've got drawn out here is the bracket that's going on our driver's side. We're going to keep this portion and we're going to cut this portion off. That way, um, this portion is still touching our axle, and then this part is not interfering with our bracket anymore. Once you get your bracket cut, you want to put it on the front side of your axle, um, because it's definitely not going to fit on the back side here. And then you'll either need to use a swivel to get in through this gap here to be able to tighten and torque that down, or you can lift up on this whole assembly again, tighten those down, and then put it back down. Now we could take our bracket that looks like this. You'll notice there's a little notch in it. Uh, that notch needs to go in between the two leaf springs on this outside here. And this is going to be our uh, little support bracket that helps to hold this assembly from the other side of the leaf pack. Now to get these U-bolts in place, or the, the long bolts that go in place, you almost have to tilt it like that. Drop your bolts down through it. And then we'll, we can rotate it up into place. We'll put two on each side. We've got our bolts in place. We're going to take this, lift it up higher than the leaf pack, rotate it down into place, get those slide in there. I'll do the same to the other side. It's kind of, you kind of have to do all this at one time. that lined up. It should sit there all right for you. And then we're going to take our flange nuts and put one on each one of these bolts. Now for the bracket that's going to straddle underneath the axle, we're going to have to kind of build that ourselves. We'll take two of these L brackets that come in your kit, the one carriage bolt that's a little bit smaller in your kit, uh, put a flange nut on the other side. And you notice how these uh, notches are facing opposite directions. All of these little blocks are the same block, so you, that's what I'm saying. You kind of got to build this little bracket yourself. And then what you'll do is put your bolts in place. Our bolts fit better on the, uh, the more inside portion of this, and because we've got a little bracket on the front side of the axle that's interfering with, we're just going to lift this up into place. This is like a game to try to get these to all stay together and line up perfectly. And once you get it up, held up against a frame like that, we'll take another flange nut and throw it right here on this bolt. Once you get this all snugged up to the bottom of our axle, I'm just going to tighten this one up first, then these two, this one and the one on the other side, and then we'll tighten these bolts up here. We're going to do this using a 14 millimeter wrench. We're going to come back with our torque wrench. Be very careful around these lines. And we're going to torque all of this hardware to the specifications for the 3 8 
um, hardware on top of our airbag. After you get the driver side airbag installed, we're going to do the same for our passenger side. The passenger side is going to have a heat shield included. You want to make sure that you put it between the top of the airbag and the bottom of our top bracket. And then you're ready to start running your airlines. Our airlines are run to an onboard air compressor, but I can kind of show you um, how they're routed for uh, just your manual fills. So if you have just manual fill and you don't want to put a compressor on board, um, you can run your airline into the top of your bag and then run it back along your frame rail, just tie it off to existing wiring. Um, same thing on the driver's side. You want to run them both back and then you're going to get one bracket in your kit that will hold our airlines and you'll just want to tie them together in these, this bracket so that you can air up your left and your right side bag. And once you've got your airlines run, you want to pump your airbags up to about 50 PSI. That's enough pressure to test whether or not your, um, all your connection points are going to have any leaks or not. Take some soapy water, spray it on those connection points, and that will tell you whether or not um, you have any leaks in, it, in the connections. You want to look for uh, either rapid forming small or big bubbles out of your connections to see if you have any leaks. If you do, you want to just disconnect that hose, put a nice clean cut on it, uh, with a sharp razor blade and then stick it back down into the fitting. Well guys, once you know that all your connections are leak free, that's going to do it for the installation.